Leader's Brain uh, here, another episode where we are dealing with the top 10 books for teen discipleship. Now, we've done, you, this is like your third time uh, doing these lists, and I've done a, a, a few more. This one, this, this topic, I have more books that didn't like, oh, I gotta, make, you know, <laughs> I gotta do this one. And I just, it was hard to, I mean, the stack was a pile, and I'm like, no, I can't do that one. Have you switched your list much? Have oh, you... any given day I could move one out and put another one in, and yeah. there's one I'm still fighting with <laughs> yeah, right, saying, now. right now. You're like, right now, you're oh. like, I should go get it. Yeah, if we would have done top 20, and maybe someday we, we're gonna have to expand this one just a little <laughs> bit. Uh, because instead of writing on tiles, we just brought the books with us and uh, I'm gonna share. Uh, now some of these, uh, some of the covers may be different. They may be reprinted. I know a couple of mine are old as the hills. You can only get them used yeah. uh, now. I hope you can find some. <laughs> right, right. Um, so that's uh, going to take place. There's also always, always a caveat when it comes to books. Uh, books can sometimes be kind of scary to, uh, to recommend, especially to an audience that I don't know who all is recommending it. You just have to know that we we know there's only one book you can rely on. The Word of God has truth and there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, everything I can believe that's written within it. And, uh, and so the Bible is that book. But we're about to share with you 10 books written by fallible authors oh, wow. <laughs> that might even have a whole fallible chapter or, or yeah or yeah, or there may be an author that uh, does something in their life uh, along the way or has or, or something like that and you're like what in the world are they or are they talking about we we are just saying that with these books they have been helpful to us in the process of de teen discipleship how did you pick this set of books. I mean, I, I know what our topic is, but did you? Is there anything about your list that you want to share before we get going? I really looked at the way that I discipled, and mm -hmm. I looked to the shelf that I went to. I also thought about with teen discipleship. I'm thinking about youth sponsors who I'm discipling and parents who I'm discipling. Mm -hmm. So that's a part of the whole program. So sometimes it's a book I give to a parent. Sometimes it's something I teach to the teen. Yeah. This was interesting for me because when I got partway through it, I thought to myself, I could have done two different lists. Like there is the book that's helpful for me to learn how to disciple teens. Right. And then there is the book that I actually use with teens. teens. Right, right, in the discipling <laughs> yeah. of teens. And those are almost two different books, but I, we, we mixed them into the same uh, list. And I've gotten a little peek of his books over there. Uh, and he's done uh, some of the same uh, sort of thing. And, and we'll we'll talk about that as, as we go. But uh, this is the sort of uh, sort of list that once again, I'm just, I'm pretty excited about this list. And and uh, uh, we'll see how many uh, we duplicate. Once again, we didn't, uh, uh, we didn't uh, c collaborate on any of the list and just put it together, showed up this morning. And and uh, here it goes. So uh, first of all, uh, my number 10 uh, on the list is a book that I've handed out and given away uh, quite a bit. It's Decision Making in the Will of God and uh, by Friesen. And he uh, kind of divides this book into three parts. Uh, here at the first third, he talks about a, a view of God's will that could be uh, fairly harmful, something we wouldn't want to do. And then the middle third, he talks about uh, a, a, a way that you would look at uh, God's uh, decision-making in the will of God. And then the last third, he goes over like um, major questions and major things that you would, uh, that you would or major decisions uh, that you would make. I really like some of the way he kind of uh, takes uh, some of these categories right here and he gives you just a summary of that uh, section right there. So I've definitely uh, used this book in a Sunday school uh, situation, especially with juniors and seniors. Uh, this has been a, uh, a, a helpful book and, uh, and it's, it's, a, it's, it's been challenging uh, to my thinking. He's going to emphasize that it's our responsibility to make good choices, uh, that God gives us a uh, kind of a, a, a boundary to live inside, and we have to make some wisdom choices within that. So. Yeah, when it comes to decision making, especially when you hit upper, you know, the the upper teen years, mm -hmm. and then really into college and stuff like that. So you've got that 18, 19, 20, that decision making is huge, and that's where they really start to do it. So yeah. addressing that is well, amazing. And I think once a young person gets through puberty, this is something that we need to teach them how 
to do, how to make good decisions uh, in their life. And they're about to make a ton of huge ones. Uh, like, like these decisions, I've, I've heard this statistic, have no idea if it's true. Uh, <laughs> but eight out of the 10 biggest decisions that you will make in your life, you make in your 20s. And so it means in your teens, you need to be teaching them how to make good choices. Okay. Very good. What's your I, number 10? I would go to a resource book. This is um, Handbook of Counseling Youth by Josh McDowell. And it just really is, an, it's one of those books you pull off the shelf and you're saying, I'm not really sure how to deal with cutting or some of these different topics that you're like, never dealt with it, never. Mm -hmm. but, but I really like the, he goes to a process, he talks about where it's found in the Bible and how it's addressed and then a process that you might go through in, in, in working through the issue and dealing with that with youth. One of the things that makes this book interesting, uh, and it's, it's one of the things that I'm sure you do when you look at books, you open up uh, right at the beginning and you look at the table of contents. Yeah. And this is the book that the table of contents almost sells the book. You're it like, does. oh, I don't, I didn't have a book on that. Oh, that's a, that's a good starting <laughs> point. And uh, so it just goes over a number of different areas. That's an excellent one. So good book. Okay, uh, my number nine is a book that was really helpful uh, for me in, in working through how I was going to disciple uh, young people. A Jerry Bridges book, The Crisis of Caring. And uh, this book goes through the concept of koinonia. And this probably had the biggest impact on the way my Sunday school class operated and the way that I got teens involved in uh, in the Word of God and in our conversations uh, together. So once again, this probably isn't a book that I'm handing out to teens, but this is the book that had an impact on the way that I uh, discipled and mentored to them. I was really hit with how um, how little I was doing in terms of that koinonia, that fellowship uh, together in order to help my uh, teens out. And that's another thing that I needed to teach them how to fellowship around God and His Word. Haven't read it. Uh, it's going on. I'm going <laughs> to write it on my list. I have not read it. Oh man! No, I, I'm going to go home and order it. The, the, yeah. the title is no good. Like it's really tough. The and the cover is really gripping. Crisis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the crisis of caring, but it is all about fellowship, and uh, it's probably the sort of book that. Um, uh, youth pastor or pastor, you may find you you're gonna you're gonna stop at a chapter and think about the the schedule of your Sunday services. You're gonna think mm -hmm. about how you open and how you close uh, different things and whether or not you fellowship even happens. Uh, so it's it's a good one. It it's it'll challenge you. Talking about fellowship, mm -hmm. nothing like a campfire to fellowship around. This is the art of storytelling and. The farther I get into working in, in ministry with teens, counselors, uh, I think you need to learn how to tell the story, tell your story. Um, as I began to really think about, you know, um, so if somebody's going to learn how to teach a Sunday school lesson, this will, in, in really, um, what, 14 points or something yeah, 13, like that? Yeah, 13, 14 phases yeah. or steps. Yep. You can teach this book in an hour, I've heard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've done that a couple times. <laughs> yes, and um, so I really like this because I think what you're doing, for me, where it really went over the top is where I, when I moved from telling somebody else's story to realizing that I need to tell my story and what God's doing in my life and, and you know, um, and, and how you think about it. And one of the first stories I wrote after thinking about this was about the buying of a car for my daughter and, and it came out of just praying to God through the whole process, just remembering the eight or nine little things that were God mm -hmm, in the story. Mm -hmm. and, and then I started to apply these principles and I'm like, we need to tell our story to yeah. God's glory. Wow. This is uh, not on my, didn't make my list, but it is a favorite, uh, favorite book. And now that you're talking about how we use it in the discipleship of, of teens, I, it, that's true. That, you know, that skill of telling a story is something you get better at. For me, the, when I first went through this book, um, it has all the steps and it challenges you to take a story and apply all the steps to the story. Like pick one and do all of, all of the things. And there are a few times that I thought to myself, no, this isn't going to work. This is, <laughs> I mean, you're like, this is dumb. Um, but it really, what? the one story that I t went through when I was doing this is probably the story I'm best known for now, uh, the Lucky Cuddles, and, uh, and it would take us 20 minutes to tell the story, but it is a, 
it's a powerful thing. And you think about how many times Christ told a story. And in his word, it's full of stories. And it, yeah, this is... Well, when you unlock one. that, you continue to write more stories. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and those same, same principles are true over and over again. Yeah, yeah. I, I think if you look back in your own life, you will... Uh, the people who had an impact on your life, chances are they could tell a story. I, I mean, you look back in your youth, and chances are... That's, that's uh, part of their life. Man, that's a good one. Okay, uh, my next one is The Vanishing Conscience uh, oh, okay. by MacArthur. Okay. And uh, this is a really good Sunday school, like a jump off point for a Sunday school uh, time. For me, it would have been something that I would have uh, gone through. One of my favorite, uh, favorite things in here is a chapter on temptation and uh, that every temptation has a lie in it. You've got to confront the lie in order to uh, conquer the, uh, the, the temptation. Really good. This is also really helpful uh, when teens are starting to work through hypocrisy and everybody's a little bit different and, and I can take the same word of God, but I have to make application and I'm growing and there's different levels of maturity and you know they're trying to put everybody in a box, but everybody doesn't quite fit. This is a really good, kind of a thought-provoking book for a teen and uh, again, and something that by the time they're into adulthood, they need to have an understanding. And then the conscience is something that, um, that we have to make sure we don't rely on too much, that we recognize its ability to, uh, to, to, be, to be abused. Um, and uh, it's a good, good study for teens. I've certainly used that in, in studying, just mm -hmm. not on my list. <laughs> That's nice, because we're going to get like 20 books out here, and we're like, those are good ones. <laughs> All right, where are we at? Is this number? Uh, we're on number seven. Number seven. Eight. Eight. Okay. Well, <laughs> one of those numbers. Um, I, this one I really like. When when you're dealing with teens, you're going to talk about temptation, and in a number of fields. Um, I I love this. Think before you look. Forty powerful reasons to rise above temptation, and and it is said in such an encouraging way. Um, uh, one of the reasons I wouldn't um, of fall for that temptation is I enjoyed the pleasure of a love relationship with God. So there's all kinds of, uh, all kinds of great reasons to say no to temptation. And it is, it is really, um, it makes you think, and it really starts in a place that, that it captures their attention right away. So this is something I would work through with a guy um, uh, in, and I would work through with a dad in, in, mm -hmm. in both of these things. Um, think before you look. I think these are uh, like the practical, some of these have a very practical um, kind of nature to them, yep. you know? So some of these you'll read and they don't, really, they don't go into the practical, but I really think that teens do well uh, to hear the principle, but then also that means you could say this or you could do this and, and, uh, and they like that uh, along the way. So we got to get room for your book there. We got to put it okay. in. Yeah, nice. Don't want to cover up story. Right, right. We don't, can't, uh, can't cover up storytelling uh, there. So there you go. good stuff. Okay, uh, my next uh, book, number seven uh, on the list here, is uh, kind of a, an apologetic uh, type of book uh, that you would uh, jump from. Now, I'll be honest, in my early days in youth ministry, I was scared of the apology. I was scared of the questions. I'm like, ah, I don't know if I have the depth uh, for that. Um, but this one uh, was really helpful. I don't use the entire book. I use just the front uh, front half of it, uh, tough questions about, uh, about God and about uh, a little bit about evil. Um, I'll, I'll point out uh, kind of the way uh, the way it was helpful uh, to me. It is a compilation uh, book, so you're going to find people uh, that, or, or there's going to be, there's one chapter in here that I really don't agree with uh, that deals with uh, creation and uh, his view on the guy who wrote on that. I didn't care for it, uh, but most things are good. So here I'm on chapter two, and uh, this is thoughts about uh, tough questions uh, about evil. And uh, so what he's going to do do is he's going to have the question right here, what is the origin of evil? But you'll see that the answer is just that page and that paragraph. <laughs> I, lo I love that. You know what I mean? Because he gets right to the point right away. And, uh, and, and so it's really full, like really stocked up. Now, sometimes, if you know, what is the origin of evil? That's normally a chapter. Like... <laughs> you know, of stuff. And so I really like the way the question is there and then the answer is really tight. Now, I know you could go way more deep and you could do much more things, but for your eighth, ninth grader, 
th they're going to understand uh, this. Second half of the book goes through a bunch of different r religions and that sort of thing. And that may be something that you like. It's, it, I believe it's good material. I've just always used the front half of the book and, and those questions. And, uh, and they have created lots of discussion and, and uh, that sort of thing. We used it for an Institute of Ministry class here, and when we got to the chapter on creation where they had a very different view than we would have, um, I found that it was a, a good chapter when they read through it to really say, so what do you believe and do you know the arguments of both sides? And so with an older group like college, I want them to be able to work through some critical yep. thinking. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so to me that was, you know, there almost was, well, why would you give us a book that you don't even agree with what he says? well, let's talk about this, you know? And I was like, at first I was like, should I have given this one? And then I'm like, I'm glad I gave this yeah, one because yep. we really got to talk about this with some passion. That's funny that you mentioned that because I did the same thing in my teen class. I said, here, I'm going to share with you something that I don't agree with. And then I read the things and I said, no, what, what, what makes this wrong? So that is uh, true. If you're in apologetics, obviously you're going to take anything written, apply it back to God's word, you, you know, for your answers. And that was a great great exercise for us. All right, my next book would be um, Reaching the Generation for Christ. This is, um, this is a book really designed for youth leaders um, and, and youth pastors that want the, um, the foundations of why I do what I do. And so he has a, a number of different um, um, skills in youth ministry. But for me, again, like Sam, this whole book really comes down to a few chapters for me that are that are really good, and it's it's the axioms of youth ministry. So when somebody comes up to me and says, "Well, Pastor Scott, um, how do you do youth work?" and I say, "Well, you find a guy, <laughs> you find a comfortable way to get into his life, and then you bring them to Jesus." <laughs> and mm -hmm. they're like, "That's it." I'm like, "That's really it." <laughs> I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot to that, but it really is. So axiom number one is youth ministry begins when an adult finds a comfortable way to enter the life of a teen and to bring them towards Jesus, move them to Jesus. Yeah, and I've known Scott for quite a few years, and he's been talking about this book uh, for quite a few years. <laughs> is, it, um, is it even available new, or is it, a, is it a book that's out of print? You know, I should have looked. I think you can get them used, get them but used I don't know easily. that they're new. It, and, and there's a lot of, there's, this one has a lot of good stuff because it's like, what type of structures would you do? So there's mm -hmm. a number of different ways that you can structure youth groups. And, um, and then, you know, it talks about um, at, what, at what number you begin is the peak number for dealing with youth. And he gives about 30, and I, and I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. I, after 30, I think you got to start dividing. I think he loops peak effectiveness. Yeah. So there's some really good things that it's truly an axiom of youth ministry, and when I first started, these weren't available, mm -hmm. and so now I cling to this book. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I it's, cling to these principles. Yeah, it's a, um, it's the sort of thing. This one is going to deal quite a bit of philosophical stuff, and you're gonna, you're gonna find a lot of. It's it's kind of the book you would go back to a few times and be yep. like, ooh, that that couple of paragraphs I didn't. Yeah, I missed it. That, yeah, yeah. yeah and, that's, I need to add that uh, to my thoughts. That's, so when you're when you're going through, and somebody asks you, why would you even have a youth ministry? I mean, is that really mm -hmm. a necessary part of a yeah, church? That book will, this is yeah. the type of thing that gets you thinking and working through those processes. Yeah, good. Put it on the far end there. Yeah, we'll just we'll continue our rainbow uh, okay. around. There. Rainbow. Excellent. Okay, uh, next one for me, uh, book number six uh, here on the list is the twelve essential skills uh, for great preaching. Now here's. Teen discipleship, you know, when we started saying, okay, top 10 books for teen discipleship, I started asking myself, what is the book that probably had the most impact on my, on my teens? And they, if, if you go back to my early years in youth work, they would look at a three-month time where we went through the book of James. And we just worked through the book of James. But we worked through the book of James using this book's design of Bible study of looking at the way you would um, outline a passage, the way that you would research it in order to, uh, to preach it. 
But we, and at the time I told them that I was working through a book, you know, on how to preach and, and we were going to use those principles to learn a book in the Bible and, and go through it. Well, by the end of that time, we'd all outline the book of James and, we'd, and he has a structural diagramming uh, passage in here, which you're going to think to yourself, structural diagramming, teaching teens, I'm going to bore them to death. But actually, it was huge. Um, it, was, it was like lights were turning on as we're studying this passage and we're, and we're looking through it and I realized that the principles that he taught me in this book were really principles of Bible study. Now he was writing it to a pastor to help him preach better and I was teaching it to a group of teens to help them live better but man it was effective. I, I realized that this is a book that I wouldn't normally think of as a discipleship for teens but I would encourage you to take a book like this and show teens how to study God's word. Show them how to learn about it, its depth, and kind of uh, go through it. So it was a very effective book for us. So Sounds okay. great. Your number six. Peacemaker for me by Ken Sandy. I think that one of the things that you find a lot with youth is conflict. And conflict's happening all the time. And what do we deal with, you know, um, the Bible has a lot to say about living at peace with all men. And how do I deal with forgiveness and what does reconciliation look like? And, and, um, and what does it look like in real life? And this one where he starts and he says, um, peacemakers breathe grace. And, and when I began to think through and read through this book, I was like, you know, that, that's one of the statements that I want in my life. I want to be one of those people that when they walk in the room, there is this breathing grace that happens because every relationship really needs to have that. There needs to be grace a part of the relationship because mm -hmm. um, you're going to make a mistake. You're not perfect. How do you deal with the situations when you made real mistakes? Yeah, it's interesting because you find yourself dealing with big um, big themes in teens, yeah. and this is a big one, like how to get along yeah. is, is one that they need to figure out, and if they don't figure it out when they're teens, um, I mean, marriage is in a rough spot, work is in a rough spot, like, like they, they've got to figure that out in these six or seven years before they go into adulthood. What does it look like to ask for forgiveness, and what does it look like to receive a request of forgiveness? Yes, what does yes. it look like to extend grace and forgive? That's nice. Okay, uh, number five on my list. I'm back to Jerry Bridges uh, again. He's got a number of good books. It, it could have been a... Trusting God, oh, yeah. Joy of Fearing He's God. He's got a bunch of them. Uh, Respectable Sins is oh. another good one. But for me, Discipline of Grace is probably uh, my, my favorite for actually working with teens. Uh, the Practice of Godliness and the Pursuit of Holiness are two classics of his. Um, and this one kind of sits in the middle. Um, and, and you're going to find that... Uh, uh, that, uh, they also have a workbook for this one. So this is actually one you could buy, hand out, let them read, uh, work through. And I have done that um, in the past. He's a good author who uh, writes at a level that your teens would be able uh, to, to work at. He's, uh, he does, he's, not, he's not quiet about pulling a few punches here and there and telling you what you, what you need to hear, but he doesn't live way in the clouds uh, either. So I like that uh, for teens. And, and uh, the discipline of grace is God's role and our role in the pursuit of holiness. And, you know, this is my job and this is what God uh, does and this is how that uh, meets. Well, once again, there's going to be something here that you're probably going to be like, oh, I'm not, I might say that just a little bit differently because we're getting into that age old, the sovereignty of God and the free will of man here, which, uh, uh, which I believe both of those. Um, but uh, this one, this book does a good job, I think, in helping a, a young person uh, make good steps forward in their life. That's my number five. I like it. I still have to read it. That's crazy, <laughs> but it's true. But I'm going to go to Jerry Bridges, too. Um, and this, this is the, actually the workbook. Oh, that's the workbook with the book, right? This is the workbook with uh, the book. Yeah, they, do, yeah. they sell one with the book and the workbook separate, right? Yes. I like that. The division's great. It really works good in a Sunday school class. Mm -hmm. it's, it's divided up much nicer. It's the, the, the practice of godliness what I, what I love about this is a lot of people spend time on the things you should be doing, teens should be doing, you should be kind, you should be this. But he starts with the heart of devotion and where does it all, what's the motivation? And I think we've seen as parents and as teachers, people who are missing the heart of devotion and they're trying to do the works of God without 
the worship of God mm -hmm. and without mm -hmm. the grace of God, yeah. and they're frustrated yeah. and they're angry. And this, this starts with that heart of devotion, and then it moves into the, the different um, areas of godliness. And some that, my guess is if I said, list the traits of godliness, you might miss a few of these that he talks <laughs> about here. So this is a good his, one. His, um, his chapter on patience, yes. that one is just really good for me. And, and every one of these are really great topics. Again, if you're going to teach the fruits of the Spirit, uh, you are definitely into this book on a big way. I've not seen the, the small group curriculum with it. I think that's great. I mm. think that's excellent. Really so. helpful. Yeah, so the practice of godliness, the pursuit of holiness, the discipline of grace, these would all be kind of in the same uh, category of, of dealing with some of the same things. My next one, uh, my number four, mm -hmm. uh, is Spiritual Leadership by Oswald Sanders. you got to look for the old ones. Some of the new ones, a lot of the scripture is pulled out or there's not mm -hmm. as much uh, there, but an old one uh, has a lot here. Again, this book is just packed uh, with stuff uh, that you're going to do. And what I like about this is if you're going to teach leadership or you're going to teach you, you know teens how to, uh, how to be leaders, this is a great starting book. There's a lot of books out there uh, that can do it, but this is a good middle of the road in terms of depth uh, that's going to really help uh, a teen in the area of spiritual uh, spiritual leadership. For us, uh, we do our leadership institute or our leadership live, and that is um, this would be a book where uh, you'll see the influence of this book on that uh, on that program. Uh, but uh, he again uh, tells you these are these are going to be some of the costs. Here's what a leader does. Um, really good uh, for teens uh, and and for a guy class uh, too if you're splitting everybody up uh, that would be a good one for the guys we did this one and uh, I am um, leadership mm -hmm. yep yeah both of those would be good good ones okay your number four visual theology um, this is um, by uh, Tim Chellies and it, it's a it's a really good book where it it is I, I had to say to myself where where's my theology I want to make sure that I have a good theology book in here not that some of these aren't aren't um, theological, but this one really walks you through visually. So it's it's got depth in, in theology, but it also has uh, great artwork. And I believe that the more that we're working with teens, they are capturing more visually uh, and, and they're a little bit less patient with a book <laughs> that doesn't have anything but words. Mm -hmm. And so um, this just has so many wonderful things to it that I, and it's just so clear that it clarifies the thing it's teaching by the pictures it's doing. So it's like theology in an infogram. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and just like a many um, object lessons, visual theology is that uh, you, you're going to sit there and be like, oh, that could be drawn different, or oh, we forgot about that. Sure. But, but he's trying to do something that's helpful uh, to you to understand uh, what's going on. And if that's a benefit, then that's good. It won't be all-inclusive. Uh, along the way. Yeah, I don't, I didn't have a theology book in my stack, but I wanted to put one in. I mean, even something like Charles Ryrie, I'm surprised how many times I go back to that in the discipleship of teens. Uh, and then Moody is probably the one I'm using right now uh, the most. So that's good. Probably the book that I have used, well, uh, we're into, like, for me, there was some some semblance of, like, what is your number one or is this a top ten? And we didn't, we didn't talk about that earlier, did we? Didn't really talk about... This is a hard thing, like, top ten, like, which one is better? I, I, just, I just said to myself, which ones that I use the most? And I put in my top three are probably the ones I went back to the most often that I have, I've, uh, man, I don't know, five, six times we've gone through this over, over the various years. So for me, the book Quality Friendship by Enrig, and this is, again, is an old book, um, and it goes through uh, the relationship that David and Saul and Jonathan uh, had. And I believe that teens, this is another one of those kind of things that they're trying to figure out. What what do, how do I have friends? Um, what if I don't have friends? I, I like some of his stuff. You know, four ways to blow up a friendship. But I like what he does is he goes back and he shows in the passage where uh, where that happened and what uh, the person did uh, to do that. So I, I probably, I'm probably coming back to this book almost every three years. Um, it is that kind of book for me. And it just, I, it really is a topic that uh, that everybody's kind of shaking their head on, like, I need that. Oh, friendship. I mean, this is where they really begin to grapple mm -hmm. with those statements and the, the thoughts, who am I going to be a friend with? I'm willing not to have a friend. Uh, 
all of those important things. And uh, I was struggling what to give up to go to friendship because like 13 <laughs> is my friendship. <laughs> okay, you're on number three. I am on number three. Well, I would, um, on my number three, I have really more of a category than, um, than a specific book. I would say um, I use biographies so much at my dinner table, whether it was with my kids or with people, and, and we were always reading or sharing. Um, this one is by Georgie Venn, Moscow Express. His first one talks about how um, he's on the train coming back from being in prison, has the opportunity to share the Bible and read it at open, and, and talks about the power of the Bible. So um, there's a number of these books. I, George Mueller, again, comes back. I come back to statements in his life that he, COVID, you know, what do you do when, when bad things are happening? George Mueller went through the Black Plague. You know, mm -hmm. people are laying in the street, and they're deciding as a church to do ministry. So I do think biographies take the principles of God and, and demonstrate how lives have lived them up. Corey Ten Boom would be another one. Bruchko. Bruchko. And for me, when we started dealing with disabilities, and particularly as a husband, dealing with a wife with disability, um, Johnny Erickson Tata and Ken Tata, and Ken's book on saying I had to learn how to love my wife through working with her, stunning, stunning mm -hmm. teaching. I actually believe that you can take a book like that and combine it with your storytelling book. And when you read through the book, you can tell the story in ways that 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 bring people like like alive. Uh, Simeon, um, uh, the book that he has, he's got a couple of chapters in there that I just want to I want to teach that to teens. I want to tell the story. I want to bring them to the moment that I saw within the book. And so, uh, storytelling with some of that is really good uh, as well. Um, I kind of cheated here uh, in my top 10. I brought the Bible. Uh, <laughs> I was hoping we assumed the Bible. <laughs> right. Was Scott, way ahead of all these. Like, what do you mean you put that in the list? <laughs> no, the, I'm not putting the Bible in the list, although the Bible's top the one first. for all of us. Yeah, yeah all for of all of us. Let's yeah. be clear on that. These don't matter without the Bible. <laughs> right. But I'm bringing this one because of the study Bible uh, that it is. This is a life application uh, Bible. So the life application Bible, what I love about the life application Bible is uh, throughout, um, you know, they obviously give you the, the various um, uh, kind of reviews of the books and they give you a section that, that commentates uh, on the uh, comments on uh, the book right there. Thanks. But what I probably like the most is uh, throughout the uh, Bible here, they'll have these uh, little sections on people yeah. within the Bible, so Zerubbabel. And so what I found myself doing in our teens, kind of our... our um, scope and sequence, is that we want to learn about the people in God's Word. And this gives me just the right amount of depth to get started on a good study, to, to say, we're just going to spend one Sunday on this particular person, and let's learn about them. And this little page right here became almost like the outline for teaching about this person. So I don't know how many are in, the, in this Bible. There's there's a there's a bunch. Oh, yeah. uh, they've got a whole bunch. I mean, every time they introduce a new character, uh, then there's a section on you know about uh, that uh, person. And there's a couple of outlines in here that I found in the application part that I'm like, this is a really helpful. Like it's a real basic uh, setup, but that's what teens uh, need. So life application uh, Bible with particularly uh, the character studies is what I really liked about this. They have a teen version of that that brings in some questions along with that mm -hmm. that I think really does dial in yeah. a little bit more. So um, I would agree. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. What's your number mm -hmm. two? Number two. <laughs> number two, again, like, like biographies, this is a category. I would say they need a good devotional. And um, along the way, when we were working with youth, we started talking about um, uh, writing a biography of God and... And then Sam wrote this really nice, My Biography of God. And I love the process by which when you're done with it, you are thinking about God in so many different ways. And I've done this with people through a summer. And, and I've discovered that when we do this together, one, I'm getting deeper, but we actually are growing together because we're sharing these things. And what I loved about it, this idea of if I was going to explain about God, what would I need? Would I need a sentence, a paragraph? Would I need a book? <laughs> and so our challenge was 
develop your knowledge of God to the point where if somebody asks you about God, it's going to take you a while to get to the end of what you know. Let me comment on this one with our first duplication. First thing number is one is the biography of God. <laughs> Ironic uh, here that we are next to. We've gone this all the way to number one, and we haven't had a duplicate uh, yet. But again, for me, uh, these top three, which ones do I use the most? Biography of God became a book because we went through it several times working on our biography and we had all these papers we had these little notebooks and we keep adding papers to it and we're like you know what we just need to make this uh, a little bit more organized and that's where this came i really believe that teens lives change when what they believe about god changes agreed and the only way yeah. that you can change what you believe about god is to learn more about God. And so the biggest thing, I would get frustrated with devotionals that were just kind of like uh, reading comprehension. Like, well, they just said that two paragraphs ago. That, that's the answer, you know, and I just need to refer to page 33. Um, and I'm like, ah, and then what's, uh, you know, what's best for you? I just, I just want us to concentrate on God. I just want us to yeah. get to know God. I would find that when teens would spend a solid three weeks with this, it would start to change their life. Like they would, if they can put the habit together of three weeks or more, then they are starting to uh, really like it. I like this because it is a year long uh, event. You can add more chapters uh, to it. The, the form is easy. Like, like you could add a chapter and say, we're gonna uh, do this. There's a few sections that make it really nice. I use these on Wednesday nights where our accountability was we would do our devotions during the uh, week. On Wednesday, we would come and we would share. And all we would do is we would share what we learned about God. These uh, little sections right here would give you an idea. Oh, Oh, go back to this section and start writing what uh, you know what the knowledge of God is and and so three parts of the book the first part is the passages you're gonna read you spend a week in the passage second part is everything that you've learned about God and the third part is uh, prayer requests and praises which I believe are the practical way we learn about God in our in our own lives and so it is a kind of a kind of a, a year-long uh, effort and um, and everybody that I've met that spent time learning about God, it's been a benefit to the way that they live. It's been a really good tool. Um, and I've used it with adults, uh, with teens, uh, all, all over the place. So. I love the fact that you're spending a week in one passage. Yes. So you're not rushing through, you're just saying, you know, this is more study mm -hmm. than just this isn't Bible reading, this is really Bible study yeah. and observation. All you do the first two or three days, you read the passage twice, read the passage twice, read the passage three times. Like by day four, um, you're not even writing anything yeah. really in the first half, you're just reading the passage. Day four, you circle any reference to God that is in there. And then you realize anytime God is referenced, there's something about him around that. Yeah. So just take that and then start learning everything there is about God. You will find that kids will observe things and then they will share things together. And they go, I learned about this about God. I didn't even think about that. And suddenly you see lights turning on as the Holy Spirit works in their heart uh, as they're reading scripture. Um, it is just a tool that pushes them back toward God's word, which makes it so valuable. That's my number one. Yeah, your... you're training them to see. Mm -hmm. What's well, your number one? Well, it would, living by the book. <laughs> um, I really like to help the, the teens take the time to learn how to go through the Bible. What, what's important about it? Um, grasping God's, God's Word is a, another one that's more of a college level. But coming back and saying, uh, you know, observation, um, interpretation, application. And he just really teaches you to work through this. I think if I can connect them to the Word of God, it will change their life. Yeah, yep, yep, yeah, that's, that's excellent. Wow, this is a set of 20 books, 19 of them, uh, with only one uh, duplicate. But like we said before, I can't get it down to just 10. Uh, I brought a couple more just because I, I to. had to share. We'll be brief, uh, but honorable mention number one uh, for me is a book that I started with, uh, the first book that I worked with, not a spiritual book at all, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Now, here's how I use this book. I would read sections out of this book, and some of them are extremely humanistic, and they're wrong, and some of them are really like good, and we would then say, well, how do you prove that in the Word of God? It's totally a book with no Bible in it, but it pushed my kids 
to get involved in God's word, that everything you read is not good. And so uh, as I would go through here, there would be little sections where I'd be like, okay, question mark, that's not biblical. Um, but it sounds so good uh, that it made the teens like, oh, I need to think about this, which, which again, turned lights on and said, you know, you can't, you cannot believe everything that you read. And in today's society of Google has my answer, that is so important for them uh, to, to understand. And so maybe today I would do this with uh, the Google answer, ask a question, come up with a Google answer and, and find out if that's uh, biblical or not. It sent them back to the Word of God. I use this in discipleship and I've still had teens go back to this like 30 years. Remember when we did that Dale Carnegie book? Or that? They wouldn't remember the name, they would just uh, uh, remember the conversations. Honorable mention, what do you got? Uh, the sketch. Uh, the sketch note workbook. Um, one of the things I really like to do is I like to get into areas where teens have talents and habits, um, mm -hmm. the, but their talents. So sometimes I'll use um, whittling or, or survival or not tying. Well, I like this one because when we begin to talk about this, how do you how do you hear and and begin to really process the things that you're hearing, and they're doing a lot of that. They're doing a lot of it in church, they're doing a lot of it in youth group, and, and school, and college. And so, a sketch noting really gives them an ability, and not everyone will work this way. They're, some people are very linear, and they want it a certain way, but some people are very visual, and when they begin to draw their notes, they get so much more out of it. When I began to draw my notes in church, I could open my notes up and preach the sermon back to the pastor. And I really could, it was just so visual for me. And so we actually teach them how to take notes and we start with, you have permission to draw during the sermon. <laughs> so permission to draw. Yeah, that's good. And my second honorable mention is a little book that we put together. Again, I would have used it a ton of times with our teens, uh, but a book on uh, your dating standards. It's not a book that tells you how to, like, it's not a book that tells you what standards to have. It's a book that's asking you, what are your dating standards? So as you go into the book, it, it follows a, a, a common um, uh, setup here. It has just a couple paragraphs of writing. I mean, I'm serious, like a page maybe. And then it has a think and write section where you're going to add uh, to it. And then it will have a, so that think and write is fairly long. And then it's going to have a section that if you want to go deeper into a section, uh, like for extra credit, and then the big thought of that of that chapter. I found for teens, uh, dating standards, and, and actually college students as well, but dating standards is one of these things that they need to think about it before they get in the middle of the emotional moment. And so uh, this is about them thinking about what does the Word of God tell me I should do? This will be a book that'll support a parent in the, in the rules that they might uh, put together, but it's also gonna make a young person think about what uh, where they're at. Again, we did this so many times, did it with our kids. Uh, we just kind of turned it into a booklet so it would be helpful, great uh, discipleship tool. And, and your last one? It's a great one to do before you find the guy. That, that the is girl, important, right? yep, yeah. yep, that is important. Uh, my last one is one that I've just gone through this year, Hear My, uh, Hear my Son, which is by um, Daniel uh, Estes. And it really takes the first eight or nine, first nine chapters of Proverbs and just lays it out. And it is just so rich in practical wisdom that it, it really, it talks about, you know, it talks about the assumptions that Proverbs make before you get there. And uh, it talks about the things that, why is Proverbs so powerful in sending you to observing God's world? Because God made the world, you know, and there's things to learn. So this on wisdom, if I can teach somebody to be wise, I have really helped them yeah. in so many different ways. So here you've got it. You've got well over 20 books uh, here. You've got plenty of things to add to your Amazon wish list, your Christmas list, your birthday uh, list right here. And uh, you'll find that uh, some of these things can be very helpful for our ministry with teens. I do believe that teen discipleship is one of the things that we need to figure out, okay, what are the unique things of this audience? This is a teenager. What does he uh, or she really uh, need? And then uh, do the effort uh, to teach these things. This wasn't uh, the sum total of all of our discipleship. These were just books that were helpful in the process of teaching teens.
and and I thought this is my this has got to be my one mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because it's my way to focus on this, which leads to this. I had this as my number one, but then I realized I.